He's getting a little bit frustrated. I mean, he's really been able to get in position on multiple occasions. But he's been contested when he's got there and he's had trouble finishing because Oresko's done a good job with their health defense. That is correct. Also, like you, like you stated earlier, it seems like they're getting the rebound and they're turning looking for Hillocks. They want, they want to know where he is on the floor. And Oresko's doing a great job pressuring him. Someone else has to step up for Midtown. And that's the second three point of the game for Oresko. The first points for someone not named Paul Mulcahy. A three from Nye Armstrong. A veteran eighth grader for the Jaguars. And spoke with Coach Zazowski today. He said, we were joking about how the allure of the three-point shot comes into play when you're on this court if you don't play with it during the season. And he said, we've been working on a lot of them in practice because we feel like if we're going to take a bunch of them, we might as well try to make them. I don't know. The, the three-point shot obviously has completely revolutionized the game. I mean, it, it, you're never out of a game. And anyone on the court that has any amount of strength can get it up there. And once it gets up there, it has any chance of going in like any other shot. So. Uh, you know, I'm a fan of the shot, but at the same time, it is difficult when you're coaching during the year and, and, and you don't have three-pointers. All of a sudden, now in the playoffs, you play with them. It's, it's a difficult uh, thing to coach for and against. I think there was even a couple of years where they didn't even count them as three. They left it as a long two. I, I like the fact that they brought the three-pointer back because it is, it is a part of the game. It's a I very think, important part as well. Without a doubt. I think that foul on Hillix is going to be the seventh for Midtown. If the fouls are correct, that would be a one and one. Uh, I guess they didn't call a foul. Must have be a, uh, a push off or a foul on, on Resco. Yeah. I, I don't know what happened there. We didn't get any clarification on the call. There's a hand check there, and that's going to put Midtown to the line for a one and one. This will put someone in the bonus, and it will be Midtown. Foul on Roberts. And Matt, I watched this young man in a semifinal game, pressure clutch situations against Horace Mann in the overtime, calmly go to the foul line and sink four foul shots to put his, his team in a championship game tonight. They got the right man at the line shooting one on one. Lefty feed from Mulcahy, but good strong interior defense by Cedric Wilson. He's been active, he just hasn't been able to finish down low on the offensive end. And Josh Roberts, who's come off the bench in the second quarter, been very pesky as an on ball defender, took it away from Hillix there, and he drew the contact. And he'll go to the line for two. First foul on Hillix, and he's done a very nice job. And I tell you what, as you, as you stated before, it's starting to now become more and more evident. The wear and tear and the, physical, the physicality of this game is starting to uh, show for Darius Hillocks. One area that both teams have kind of struggled to settle in is at the free throw stripe. Could be a little bit of nerves, big stage, big court. You might be a little bit more tired. As Jared Diaz gets involved with the putback. Jen Mello looking for timeout and she gets the call finally. So with 209 to play in the first half, Oresco starting to distance itself 14 to 2. If you remember correctly, last year in this same game, Oresco School got up about 19 points, if I remember correctly. And Washington, because of their experience, was able to stay with the game, stay with the game. Coach Dave Colbert does a tremendous job. It brought them all the way back to within, I believe, two. And, th and for P.J. Baccarella and his Oresco team, was fortunate enough to hold off that rally and then kind of regain the momentum and obviously pulled ahead to capture his first championship. But this is a different situation. This Midtown team doesn't have the experience that Washington team team had. That Washington team, was that was their third consecutive championship game last year. They had been there before. They were, they were seasoned veterans. Unfortunately, Midtown doesn't have that experience. So they, they're, they're in a very, very precarious situation right now. This game could get away from them, and this championship could get away, away from them very quickly. Alex on the drive. Can't get it to go. 
he's really starving for a bucket, and that's a careless foul by Rodriguez. Because they, 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 okay they, on the foul line. They needed that one. Like, like I said, when you get in position to score, you've got to capitalize on those opportunities. Because right now they're becoming few and far between for the Bears. That one had to go home, and it didn't, unfortunately, for Midtown. Okay, he with nine of the Jaguars, 14 points. His first free throw of the evening, and it's no good for him. And we almost see a turnover in the backcourt. Midtown gets it over. And now you'll see Mulcahy and Armstrong both applying pressure on Helix to double team. Someone has to be open on their weak side. That's a foul. Great job by Ralph Mason standing his ground and taking the charge. I believe that will be Hicks' second foul. It is indeed. I tell you, I've been waiting for Ralphie Mason the fourth to do something positive, and he steps in and takes a, a charge. Tremendous defensive pos possession there for uh, a rescue score. And this Ralphie Mason the fourth. You're not going to find a better kid. Great family. I know his father very well. He's also a, a fine baseball player. That's a big time defensive play. By you, the fourth, as I call him. The, the, just the fourth. It's like, uh, like Pele and, and Madonna. You got those one name guys. He's just the fourth. Absolutely. Yeah. Coach Zazowski will take a timeout. Uh, and with 119 to play in the first half and point out some of the. Uh, the dignitaries in attendance, as always, Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Patricia McGee, Assistant Superintendent, Robert Craig in attendance, Dr. Dennis Gagnon also, City Council Member Charlie Harley over there on the corner of the gym, and in the opposite corner we see the Honorable Mayor Mark Smith, away from us, Mr. Tom Jacobson, Coach Fred Macarella, Athletic Director Mike Pearson, in the far row watching his nephew Anthony Flynn. So he has uh, a personal stake in this game as well. The Stars are out tonight to see the biggest show in town. Good feed from Roberts to Diaz. Robinson Diaz will come off the bench and give it a nice lift for the Jaguars in the second quarter. Very yeah. impressed with Jared Diaz. <laughs> Having an impact on both sides of the floor. Well, Kenya hit it back to Roberts. It's all Jaguars at this point. And Wilson over the back. You can see the body language on the town, just frustrated with what's going on. Had a few attempts right up, close up, couldn't get him to go. And they, they're really struggling to, uh, to kind of find and, a and rhythm. And, with and when you're trying to pull off an upset of this magnitude, and going into the game, Midtown was was an underdog. You know, I think we can agree on that. You need those shots to fall because you don't want to fall behind. If you fall behind double figures this early, like I said, these games can get away from you very quick with the inexperience that Midtown does have in these types of games. You keep the game within six, within eight, any type of run can get you right back into it. But now it's starting to creep into that 18, 19, 20 point range. Very, very difficult now for Midtown. Mulcahy hits on both, and it's now it's 20 to two lead. He has 11 points in the first half. Obviously a game high. Who the balls, Darius? Good job by Hillis. Get it up to Murphy. Get it back. Now you get yourself in a little bit better position. Let's see if this pick and roll game works. I like the idea. I like the idea there, but I admit I just couldn't get it to go. Now, that was one of the better uh, half-court possessions of the first half, absolutely. 15 seconds to play. Rodriguez 
David Rodriguez finally gets the first basket of the half to go for Midtown. And five seconds remain. Armstrong's got to push it. He drives middle, and it won't go. And that will end the first half with the score. The Alaska Jaguars 20 and the Midtown Bears 4 in the 2013-2014 Bayonne Elementary League Boys City Championship. Okay. Second half about to get underway here at the main gym. Oresco leading 20 to four. Really did a nice job on defense. That's where everything kind of sprung up for them in the first half. I think if you're Jim Mayo though, you have to build on your last possession offensively. You had a nice little pick and roll game going. You got some decent looks at the basket. You haven't been playing poorly defensively. Okay, uh, Oresco's got a majority of their offense going transitionally and as well as the foul line. But if Midtown can just slow things down and continue to get good looks at the basket, they can get back in this game. The key here is you're playing in, 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 in a few minute spurts. You can't look at 16 points. You got to look at it less than that. And they got a decent look off the out of bounds play from Mac Murphy, but he couldn't finish. And now Roberts, who just checked back in after Flynn picked up his third foul, pushing the ball, but losing it out of bounds. You want to tell your team in, in between here, these intervals, while you're on the court, let's get it down to 16. Let's, let's try to get it down to eight with a minute to go. Let's try to get it down to six to start the fourth quarter. That's how you, the mentality you got to have when you're facing a deficit of this magnitude. Good screen in the backcourt, and it leads to a good look down the other end, but Wilson again can't finish. And Mason clears the ball, and now Alesco has numbers, and Mark Henry finishes. I'll tell you what, that's a fantastic job there. Ralphie Mason clears out, gets the defensive rebound, then has a presence of mind to find Paul Mulcahy, who then goes coast to coast and lays it in. Great job there by the fourth. Wilson now, and there's that second ball handler we talked about for the Bears, but again, a miss near the rim. Armstrong can't get the Euro step to go, and Harris pushes again. Murphy finally hits. Pretty good touch from the big man there. If they can get him going, that would be big for Midtown trying to trim this lead. I thought, I thought Mason was uh, was set there with both feet. It's a tough call going against Coach Zowski right there. You gotta sit up, wait for the pass, Cody. I mean, it didn't look like he was moving at that point. It's, it's not your typical place to see a screen being set, but we were grand school basketball, we were doing different things to free up the ball handlers. It didn't look the leader from here, but Flip Taylor made the call, Flip and John Mazaluski doing an excellent job thus far in that call in this game. If I was if I was coach Jim Mayo from the defensive perspective, I would look to bow bo box and one on Mulcahy, take the ball out of his hands, and put some more pressure on the other Jaguar ball handlers. and no good for Jamar Alexander, number three. But he was fouled by Josh Roberts, and Alexander will go to the line to shoot two. Midtown has come out very confident in the second half. They're not going to go away without a fight. Jen Mayo is a tremendous high school basketball player, and she's definitely preaching that, and uh, she's taking those uh, characteristics with her, and it's displayed in her team right now. Well, they, the players may not have a lot of experience with these games, but when you look at Jen and Frank, I also have assistant, they certainly have a lot of playing experience to draw on to, to 
kind of counsel their players for situations such as these. Absolutely. And there's two ways of looking at it, and we'll, we'll get to that during a, uh, during a uh, break in the action. I'll get back to that point in a minute. But for now, Armstrong will fire a triple from the left corner and come up short. Not the shot you want. Not the shot you want. Up 15 points with four minutes to go in the third quarter. You want to kill some clock. You want to work the ball around. You want to take the ball to the basket, try to get to the foul line. At, at this particular time right now, you don't want any three-point shots because you're not that experienced shooting in number one. And number two, you got a 15-point lead. And you got the 15-point lead not on three-pointers. You got it on taking the ball to the basket, getting easy looks, and getting to that foul line. You need to continue to do that. And I bet you that's exactly what Coach is asking some of this team right now. Patience is key in this game, especially with capable ball handlers like PS14 has. I want to go back to what you said earlier about the experience of the coaches. I totally agree with that. However, the other angle is, as much as you can tell them from your experience, they still have to go out there and play and perform and get it done. So you can have all experience in the world as, as, as a player if you're coaching, but you're not out there playing anymore. Unfortunately, Jen Mayo <laughs> and uh, Frank Iolis is playing days are over. They're not going to be able to come back from this. Their team has to. And we see that PS14 press nearly leading to it. And it did lead to another turnover. As it ball went off Hillock's hands. Jared Diaz back in for the Jaguars. He had a nice first half. And there's a triple for Armstrong. That's a three that you can live with. Stepping in, wide open, look off a good feed. Open inbounds play, absolutely. I wouldn't surprise me if Zazowski drew up like that. You're absolutely right, 100%. Hillock's no word. And Wilson turns it over. And it's Mulcahy leading the break again. Armstrong can't get it to go. A lot of contact, no call. And there's Ralph Mason running out. Mulcahy to Diaz. And it's a 20 point advantage. Jared Diaz has been an unsung hero for this Jaguar team. He's the biggest guy on the floor for them. He's given them a tremendous defensive presence. And he's also hit some big shots as well. Another forced turnover on Mulcahy. He finishes at 29 to 7. Some more dignitaries around. We mentioned the superintendent, assistant superintendent and mayor in the first half at this game. Also in the game, assistant superintendent Leo Smith in the corner with his brother. Uh, we see the Cal basketball staff, Mr. Mike Cal Taylor, head coach, Anna Callaway, and Steve Russell, Bill Broderick, a stand longtime tennis coach. At Bale High School here, to our left. And at the scores table across the way, Mr. Pete Amadeo, Director of Recreation in Bale, who does a fine job, as always, with all the athletic programs. Also, can't forget girls head coach James Turner is also here. 